Gender Income Inequality Many companies all over the world experience gender income inequality. It is the difference of income that women and men receive for equivalent positions and responsibilities. According to Gray Bowen and McFarlane, one of the factors that influence the gender income inequality is the perception of some of the population towards the capabilities that men and women have. People tend to think that women should focus on their household responsibilities, hence reducing women's opportunity to be in the top positions and receiving a high pay in an organization. It is believed that women invest their human capital in the household area while men invest knowledge and abilities that could increase their work productivity. However, based on research, some women have shown that they have the required skills to be able to work professionally. So, to reduce the gender income inequality, there are two recommendations that we think might be the solutions for this issue. The first recommendation is encouraging women for higher education. Increasing women's access and motivation to higher education can reduce gender inequality in incomes. There are different ways to promote higher education for women which could vary according to the inequality and situation of the countries, such as advertisement encouraging women through media to study, better quality on education in female public schools, provide scholarships for female top students, invite parents to join seminars on the importance of the women's education, financial support, going to study. In 2002, the Tanzanian government promulgated the national education and training policy which offers the women higher education opportunities and prohibits gender discrimination on any grounds. The result shows that government behavior to a sentence extent is the gender inequality of the enrollment personnel. Barrow and Cahan survived the chance in the gender wage gaps in the United States between 1955 and 2054, 2040, and the gender differences in full-time work experience. The relate wage of the women increased slowly after the 1980s. Also since 1980, the gender differences in work experience and in school decreased year by year. In 1980, the difference in the number of women and men in senior management positions are also started changing. The number of women increased rapidly and then the increase rate started slowing down. With the three studies, it's easy to find that as women receive more and more education, their income, work experience, and their share of senior management positions are also rising. So we can conclude that by encouraging women to receive higher education is useful in reducing gender income inequality. However, it doesn't mean that the gender income inequality will disappear over time. In fact, this is a limitation. For example, in 2015, the number of female full-time workers in the United States accounting for about 79% of male full-time workers. This also means that inequalities in gender income persist. Increased women's access to education can only narrow the gender gap income and cannot be eliminated. The second recommendation is the government should impose a mandatory quota to companies, where the law should mandate a 40% representation of the gender and women participation on the board. The goal of this quota is to increase the number of women in senior positions and in the workplace, and by doing this, narrow the gender income inequality. This recommendation is taken from a real effect on the female labor market in Norway. The law was implemented in 2003, and it came with a positive outcome for women and for the gender income inequality. It is demonstrated that women in senior manager positions decrease the difference in the gender income. The more women on top boards, the more the income differences narrow. Furthermore, educational and professional backgrounds show improvement for women after the reform, and also more motivation for women appeared due to the fact that they had the opportunity of progress in the companies. Also, more qualified women were given the opportunity to be on top boards and were recognized. 
After analyzing the two recommendations, our group decided to choose recommendation one, which is encouraging women for higher education as the solution for this issue. The probability of reducing the gender income inequality using recommendation one is higher than the other recommendation, since it can be applied in every country. It can be applied in different ways, but all with the same purpose. Meanwhile, in some countries, especially the undeveloped countries, will then be able to set a mandatory quota, or at least not with a positive outcome.